Okay, this is a little introduction to a project I'm doing with a, a rotary, a cylindrical rotor, a cylindrical rotor generator style. Um, basically, some of the older generators I made were uh, using disc shaped rotors like this and disc shaped stators like this one here. Um, in which case the rotors turn on a single central bearing like that. The problem being that these bearings always wobble and because of the very strong attraction of the magnets to the uh, cores of the coils um, it's very difficult to reduce the gap between the magnets and the coil cores um, and keep it narrow without the magnets hitting the metal of the cores. So to get around that problem we think about something that resembles an actual automotive generator uh, alternator like this where you have the stator with coils around a sleeve like uh, core and uh, a bearing at either end and a very massive rotor like that which initially has a coil inside which is fed current and um, becomes magnetized and it's a very massive thing um, but that is supported at both ends of the alternator in, in a car but but these things need to go at 1000 to 2000 rpm to get the 14 volts out of them um, so they're not that easy to convert but what about making something which resembles that construction format where you have uh, bearings at either end supporting a cylindrical rotor um, which gets rid of your, your wobble problem. Um, so this is the rotor that I've come up with. It's a uh, uh, two-part plywood rotor. It's two halves. Each each halves of the plywood are three-quarter inch plywood. Um, they are held together with uh, three narrow uh, threaded, threaded bolts. Um, ideally those should be brass, but uh, I couldn't find brass, and maybe you have better luck than I did, but they're small mass and so the magnet, magnetic disturbance they're going to cause would be as minor as it can be. The shaft also should be close this. The shaft also should be brass ideally to uh, reduce its uh, interference with the ma magnetic fields. But again this is this is steel threaded shaft a threaded shaft, as opposed to a solid shaft, has uh, pros and cons. The uh, advantage is that it allows you to use uh, nuts to secure the components at, at different parts along the shaft. This advantage is that the rotation of the shaft automatically causes um, movement or a tendency to move, uh, to shift along along the shaft, which is why the rotor has two nuts on one end, like like a lock, a lock nut, a single nut and a lock nut. The uh, nut on either side of the rotor uh, keeps it keeps it secure. Um, on one end <coughs> we have a bearing which is an idler bearing. Now these things are uh, a little pricey but you only need two of them. Um, they're four and a half inches in diameter uh, and the bearing, uh, the bearing um, socket is five eighths inch, five eighths inch diameter. So we've got a five eighths inch diameter threaded shaft. Um, okay. Show you that rotating. That is going to sit inside. 
this other half. This is the rear, the rear idler bearing, uh, so that this fits in here. Let's see that around there, and we'll turn inside so that these magnets will be rotating inside the PVC coupler and uh, the coils will then be mounted on the outside of the PVC coupling. This is a 4 inch it's called a 4 inch PVC coupling. Uh, it originally initially has uh, an inner ridge which you have to remove with rasping to make it smooth on the inside. Um, although it's called 4 inch coupling it's actually exactly four and a half inches diameter on the outside so it matches exactly the idler bearing which is nice I guess uh, four inch pipes, four inch inner diameter pipes will fit inside of it which is why it's called a four inch coupler. Okay, that's enough for now and we'll get back to this in the second uh, the second take.